So in part one of this video, I show making this pack as a 20 volt lithium ion pack to get a Black & Decker 18 volt pole saw back running. So a good way to get our older NICAD tools back usable, especially if you have some lithium ion salvaged and tested good, is to build a pack. So we built the pack and just showed it being tested. And I mentioned in that video that it could be part one if someone's interested in, uh, in adding a BMS. So I did get some replies back that, um you know, they would like to see the BMS board. So this is the board that I have ordered. Uh, get a little closer look at it. This one's kind of neat that you can actually make this like a 3S, 4S, or a 5S depending on the configuration. I just happened to print out the um, the 5S configuration drawing for it there, and I paid $7 with free shipping. The particular seller is in California. This board can put out up to 25 amps. We're showing the configuration and our load and charge. It's very typical, so uh, let's get to it. I'm gonna cut here and, and separate the pack for now. I've also cut a little piece of mica board that I'll put under this board before we're done, but I'm just gonna set that aside for now. I already have some cell monitoring wires that I've cut to length, and I'm just simply gonna um, go ahead and solder the ends of these wires here. Just get them pre-tinned, and we'll be right back. So now I'm just gonna go through with my cell monitoring wires and attach them to A, B, B1, and B2. That's gonna be our um, four cell monitoring wires and where they attach. So I'm actually gonna put a little bit of rosin flux on here and just go around and uh, go ahead and put a little bit of solder on these pads. while I'm at it and just do this B plus here and this B minus. All right, so that's got the board pre-tinned. Gonna go ahead and start attaching my wires that I have pre-tinned also. And there's one. And I'm just gonna continue across and we'll be right back. So back now after a couple minutes, we do have our four cell monitoring cables attached. So I just have to solder and, and be careful and, and solder them across here. I do have the battery discharged somewhat, but it still has some charge. So we just have to be careful when fooling with a pack. That's why I left these ends, by the way, um, cut but not stripped. So as I go across, I'll make sure it doesn't connect. You know, one doesn't connect across another terminal and short out or anything. So the last thing we'll do is we'll hook our power side up so i think i'm going to go ahead and mount the connector first it's the only through hole plated connections where i need to get to the back side before i start uh, soldering onto the pack itself i'm going to put these two on we'll be right back Okay, they got that part. And by the way, if you're interested in this little helping hands board holder, I did a video on this a while back, just buying the cheap holder. And we just talking about you can add your own arm. It's pretty easy here. You can either add heat shrink to the, to the alligator clips you buy, the, buy whatever type you want, right, and stick them in there. So it is handy. Um, if you're interested in that video, I'll put a link right here. The next step is I'm going to start adding my cell monitoring wiring. So it's pretty easy when you look at it from our minus coming off the BMS, off the first battery or your main minus, which is going to be connected here. And then just going around, we're going to hit the, the very first plus, the next one, the next, the next. And then the main plus is coming up to B plus. So if you think about it like that, you can just work your way around, kind of like the cell one, two, three, four. And then the cell five will be your final plus. So with that being said, I didn't make these wires super long and I didn't want to come all the way down to here, but we can hit right here on the minus of this one since they're connected together. So I'm just going to actually attach this one here, put a little bit of a, a bit of rosin flux on here and we'll solder on to the tab. So what I've done here is I just scratched up that little tab. It's sticking up off the cell just a little bit and where I scratched that, clean that up. 
hopefully we can stick right to it. And there we go, it's just that easy. And that's connected very well, and uh, no heat, I can touch that immediately with my finger. No heat to damage the cell there for you haters. Just kidding. And I can actually um, shorten this one up a bit. And since I'm not showing good habit here, I'm at least going to show you that I'm going to cover up these wires coming off the pack, straight off the pack, because I should not have stripped them out already and had them exposed, because it could have come in contact with the board here. And we are starting to put power to the board, so it does matter. If that happened, it could, it could damage the components. So we're just going to go here. So I'm just going to continue around, just like we did this one, following the order of this diagram for cell 2, 3, and 4 respectively. And we'll be right back. Now with all the cell monitoring wires attached, I am going to go ahead and attach my pretend uh, minus lead to the board. So I already had the board pre-tinned and the wire pre-tinned as well. So this is what we have so far. We have our minus, the main pack minus coming up to the BMS board. We have our A cell or our B1 or our first battery. They call it A here. And then we go into B. That one comes through and goes through here to B1. And then it goes through and it comes out. And this would have been B2 or our fourth cell before it comes out for our main positive. So the last thing we got to do is actually hook up the main positive to the board. But before we do, I just want to make a quick check and make sure that everything's hooked up okay. And my thoughts is going from B minus and coming around. I have charged the pack up a little bit. Close to fully charged. So we should have close to 3.9 or so. Moving on up, there's 16, and this will be our 20. It's only showing 15 or 16 right now going through the circuit because we have not attached our, our B+. I'm going to pretend this wire. We'll be back, and we'll put it on B+. Now, rosin flux does help tremendously tinning wires and, and soldering on the boards. And one thing I like to do is angle my uh, wire, the strands, down so that the uh, rosin flux doesn't go in, inside the um, insulation and therefore most of your heat and your pull of your flux is going to be out here where you need it on the tip but it does just flow beautifully and there's people out there that tell you you don't need the flux or rosin flux and you don't need it but it sure does help a lot and to me it keeps the heat from transferring so far on what you're working with because it actually helps so much it alleviates a lot of the heat you have to add just my opinion on that I'm going to go ahead and slide this uh, mica pad that I cut, slide it up under the, the BMS board, just in case it gets dropped or something. It don't want to eventually um, cut into the cells. And this does show our 20 volts out. So the first thing I'm going to do, since this battery is close to fully charged, is um, I'm going to charge it up and see if the BMS protects from over voltage. And to do that, I'm just going to bring over my power supply. And we're going to start it charging, and we'll be right back. So it's working great. Um, at 20 to 21 volts, you can see a transition where it'll, it'll start the charge if I go above 20 volts. Since the pack is a little over 20 volts. As soon as I go to 21, 21 and a half, it cuts out. But before I go any further, I'm just going to let you know I'm going to put this little protection uh, mica piece up here and put some Kapton tape around here, just one wrap. I tried to leave it off for transparency doing the testing, but I'm still a little bit worried um, just the way the design ended up here that the negative or minus of the battery terminal is really close to a pad right there on the close to the IC. So I'm just simply going to slide this in and tape it just to make sure that that can't come in contact with the board if it gets shaken around. So I'm going to tape that up and we'll be right back. I was trying to think of what's the best way to show the over voltage protection here. And, and uh, the best way to do it is probably have two meters. Uh, this one is actually on the battery pack cells themselves. So we're showing 20.34 volts. And here I'm measuring... On the output of the BMS, the um, so I will be measuring 
on the P plus and P minus here for the charge and discharge of the cells coming off of the BMS board. And I have a charger set at really close to the same voltage equalized here of the pack. But as I take my charger or power supply up, you can see that it increases on the power supply. But if you notice, the BMS is not letting my pack go above so I can go to 30 volts. And I'm protected. I'm not overvolting my cells. As I go below 20 volts, it's just going to stay at 20 volts because the BMS is outputting exactly what my cells are at. So very low on state resistance on those FETs. That's awesome. Doesn't look like much loss there. Very satisfied with that. Now we're just going to have to um, load it down and see what it will discharge to and make sure that on the discharge protection is kicking in. I'm just going to put a couple screws back in this thing temporarily and we'll go run it. Well, there we go. We dropped off at about, what, 16.6. I'll look back at the video. Somewhere around 16 and a half volts. Of course, to get the fire back off, we could just give it a brief charge, like I guess getting an uh, impulse to charge. And there we go. So, yeah, it was around 16 and a half when it went out, looks like. 16.6. So, I got my lowest uh, cell here. and dropped the charger off from charging briefly. It's at the cutoff point. And we see we hit 2.7 volts. The BMS does cut the pack off. We got one that's dropping off a little bit before the others and that's because I actually did not uh, balance them out very well when I charged them up the last time but they was within like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volts of each other so good enough for that test and I'm pretty satisfied with the BMS on the discharge. The only issue at all with this BMS is a watch out. When I locked up the uh, blade in uh, one of the limbs I was trying to get it in the hardest uh, binds as I could, cutting from the top and let it pinch and try to overwork it a little bit to see how it would hold up. And uh, it actually done really well, but when I did get it to pinch a couple times, I hit the trigger and it was still pinched. I believe it did pick up like a short circuit and it did shut off the pack. And I did have to come in here and just put the 20 volts across it to wake it up that one time. It didn't happen anymore after that. Is that a watch out? Maybe. Was it just something that I did that time? Maybe so. But either way, I'm very, very impressed with it. It actually got the uh, tool back working. The BMS is going to give us some protection. All we got to do now is just see how well it charges up with the BMS and uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, so one thing that was asked in the last video was how can I charge it? Can I charge it with my original charger? And this is one of the chargers that I had for the 18 volt. It may or may not be exactly what, what, what I was asking about, but this is the one that I still have. And I just simply have added some terminals I saved out of a battery the blade terminal and just slid in here positive negative so it's gonna it's gonna cross over here because it'll be upside down so I got I got this hooked up my power supply right now is not gonna be used and if I hook up my current meter because I have this digital multimeter hooked up to be series and we see we start sorry it's out of the side there we got it starting to charge we're showing less than an amp, so that's that's going to be okay. As long as we're not doing over voltage, it should actually charge. And we're putting out about seven. It's actually climbing slow. So I just want to do this for a test cycle to see if it answers some questions. Typically, I would not use the NICAD charger for this because it's not designed for it. With the BMS protecting it, if this did over volt, I think it would actually shut down. So I am monitoring just to make sure. The difference is the way the NICAD charges from the battery is different. So I really recommend just putting a straight um, 20 volts at about an amp charge rate, constant current on the pins and charging it up that way. Um, if you don't have a way to do that, would this still work? Well, it looks like it. Let's see how it does in the end. We'll be right back. So back now about 20 minutes later and we're approaching 20 volts. We dropped off some on the current. Still got that little bit of a pulse like it does for NICAD, but um, so though it's totally not recommended to do lithiums with the NICAD charger, it actually is seemingly doing okay with the BMS, making sure it don't overvolt. So we'll just keep monitoring and we'll see how it goes. So we're getting close to fully charged here, as we can see. Our current never got above 850 milliamps, and here we see that it did charge the pack okay. 
and somewhere around 20 and a half volts we did cut out. The BMS protected it, but we do see the issue of using the NICAD charger because this did shut it off at 20 and a half volts, but we see that this charger does go up to 48 volts output with no load or current control. So therefore, I would not use the original charger in a tight with the BMS on it. Would it charge and shut it off correctly? It does appear to do so. I don't think anybody would recommend the uh, NICAD charger for the lithiums, but with that being said, it's not like it wouldn't work in a tight if that's all you had and you had the proper BMS on it. So we are fairly balanced. Nothing went over. Nothing's lagging behind. So I would say overall, pretty successful replacement for the NICAD battery. And just getting your old NICAD tools is worth saving back running again. Still a lot more capacity than they had with the old NICADs for sure. This is still just a small, basically a 2.0 amp hour, 20 volt packs, a very low capacity pack by today's standards. The best thing would be if you did have some uh, 3,500 or, or maybe even some of the newer 4,500 or 5,000 milliamp hour cells and still just do five, you know, just do the five S one P because it just fits in there so well. It's just harder to arrange. If these packs would have been a tad bit wider, the, the case for the pack would have been a tad bit wider. You actually could have got a 2P a cell in here very easily, but it just didn't quite wide enough to get a 2P or 10 cells um, in here. But these fit super easy. So all I have left is just taping this and insulating this up with some Kapton tape. Putting my end, I'm going to put some more end barriers on here, including, I'm just going to take some of this and uh, cut it and put some ends back on it. Tape it with Kapton tape and put it back in. The only thing left to do really, this market is modified. You can tell how lightweight it is. I'll know it, but still. So anybody else I know that might come along after me, right? So there we go. So I hope you enjoyed this video today, looking at this BMS on the 5S lithium pack to get an old NICAD tool back going again. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.